Welcome. Let's discuss the special right triangle of 45, 45, 90 degrees. On the left hand side, we have the special right triangle of 45, 45, 90 degrees. And what we want to think about is, is there any relationship between the sides of this triangle? The first thing to notice is that we have an isosceles triangle. We have two angles of the same measurement, 45 degrees. Then we can claim that their opposite sides are congruent to each other. But is there anything that we can say about the hypotenuse of this triangle? We might not know the exact measurement of one of the sides, so let's just introduce a variable. Let's say that BC has a length. Let's call that length X. And because BC is congruent to AB, then AB must have the same length. So let's call it X as well. And remembering that we have a right triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. So we will have a square plus b square, where a has a placeholder of x and where b has a placeholder of the same variable of x. And that summation should be equal to c square. Well, let's just call it c. Note that on the left hand side of this equation, we have the same variable. We can simplify this. Now let's bring down the c square. Now we combine them too x squared plus x squared, that is two x squares. To solve for the hypotenuse, which is c, let's take the square root on both sides. Inside the square root, we are multiplying, so we can separate them as multiplication. And note that in the second expression, we can simplify. The square root will cancel out with the second exponent. So now we have an expression for c. c can be seen as x times the square root of 2. Let's substitute that in our triangle. What we have done, we have written every single side in this triangle using the same variable. We have stated a relationship between the sides of this triangle. We have said that the legs of this triangle are congruent. And then the length of the hypotenuse will be a square root of two times the leg of the triangle. And this is what we call the relationship of a 45, 45, 90 degree right triangle. Let's apply this relationship in the following examples. Let's use the properties of special right triangles to find the value of the given variables. Under example A, our variable, it's on the hypotenuse. So how can we find the hypotenuse only given one side of the right triangle? Notice what type of a triangle this is. This is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And don't forget that we have a relationship for that. And that relationship is that the legs of the right triangle are congruent to each other and the value of the hypotenuse, it is square root of 2 times the leg of the right triangle. So if what we're looking for is a hypotenuse, and in this case, we have the length of one of those legs, then it doesn't matter just plugging it in here. Then now we can say that the hypotenuse, it is equal to 4 times the square root of 2. So we are done. In the second example, things are a little bit different. Notice what the unknown is. The unknown is as the length of one of the legs of that right triangle. And what we know, we know the value of the hypotenuse. But notice that we cannot use the Pythagorean theorem right away because we do not know the length of the bottom leg. But we do notice that this is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And we know some relationship about the sides of that specific triangle. And the relationship is that the hypotenuse in this right triangle, it is equal to the square root of 2 times the leg of my right triangle. If we connect these two ideas together, now we can say that the hypotenuse of this right triangle, it is the result of the leg of my right triangle multiplied by square root of 2, where in this case, x is what we're looking for. It is the leg of the right triangle. 
So now that we have set up our equation, let's solve for x. Let's divide by square root of 2 on both sides. This way, this square root of 2 cancels out with this square root of 2, and now we have x by itself. Let me just flip the order. Let me write down x first, and that is equal to the expression of 5 divided by square root of 2. We can consider this our solution, but there's a problem in here. We never want to leave a square root on the denominator. To rewrite this expression and not have a square root on the denominator, we're going to multiply by square root of 2 on the top and the bottom. And then we apply our rules of multiplication. If you're multiplying two fractions, then we multiply the top times the top. That's going to give us 5 square root of 2. And then we multiply the bottom times the bottom. And that's going to give us square root of 2 times square root of 2. Because that's a multiplication, we can multiply the inside. Well, now notice that 2 times 2, that is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So now we have solved for the value of x. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.